called John McDowell Stewart. But it's not as big expedition I want to look at. It's the little ones that led up to it. The little expeditions that taught him how to conquer this country in terms of finding water and finding his way and being alive. Very little was known then about the interior of the country. No maps existed. It is said that the early European settlers knew more about the surface of the moon than the interior of Australia. There's no doubt that Australia is vast and arid. And you know, when you travel in air-conditioned luxury on tarmac roads, you're lulled into a false sense of security. It's only when you come off with the hard top that you begin to realise that, yes, you are travelling across a desert and it still has teeth. Stuart felt the bite of those teeth many times on his explorations, almost costing him his life. One of six children born in the small village of Dysart, Scotland, he came to Australia in 1839 and worked out of Hamlet as a surveyor. He thrived in the desert, the quiet and the desolation appealing to his nature as a loner. He became obsessed in his desire to map out the centre of this uncharted territory pushing himself and his men to the very limits of endurance. During these early expeditions, he developed his own approach to conquering this land, and one that in my mind made him one of the greatest explorers of this Arab terrain. It's really good to be back in the bush, and I'm looking forward to the first night's camp as we've chosen a very special place, Gregory Creek. This is one of the captains that Stuart sent in on his early journeys. And it starts to give me a sense of the terrain he was working on. He was employed here as a surveyor.